All right, guys, we are back for part two of the samurai sword mount, for the wall mount, all right? So we just got off the CNC machine, and it looks rough. Bit was very dull. Look at that, burnt the mess out of it. But we got our handy-dandy Bosch, and we're going to go ahead and plane this thing down, sand this thing down is what I mean, and then uh, work our way through the grits so we can put some finish on this thing. Let's do it. We got some Merca Abernet 150. Um, I ran out of the uh, heavier grit, so this is what we're going to use. It's going to take a little longer, but that's okay. Just keep on sanding. As we said before, this wood is really burnt. And so this Bosch actually makes short work of this wood, this lumber. Um, as you can see, it powers right through. But look, it also creates a lot of dust. So guys, you really do need a dust collector. I don't have one yet, but it's on the way. But you definitely have a, need to have a mask if you don't have a dust collector. Using a dust collector with one of these uh, Bosch or the Festool, the one that's light, that's similar to it, is a necessity. You see here, I'm not wearing a mask, and that is terrible. I, 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 you really do need to wear a mask. Don't do like I'm doing here. Um, my problem was I couldn't find one, and I thought I'd only be sanding really quickly, but when I watched this video back, it's not worth it. Definitely need to wear a mask. You can see Hector here appreciating the tool itself. So we're just going to sand through all of the, get all the burnt stuff off and get all the marks from the router out of the top of the slab. And once we're done with that, we can move on to getting prepped for finish. All right, guys. So we got the whole thing sanded, but there's like a little low spot right here from where the CNC dug in. So we got to take some time to work on this, these little spots here. Um, but that actually moves too fast. It heats the epoxy up and wants to gum up the paper. So we'll have to put that on random orbit and we'll try to knock these things down. It's got a little bit of a lip there. And after that, we can start putting the finish on and getting some other pieces made up. It's a little bit of a, in a bark inclusion here. We're going to fill this with some casting epoxy. Same here. Um, here and a few spots here and here. So here we're going to trim down the sides of the table. So I'm just going to run it through the table saw really quickly to cut down just I think it just cut down about a half inch so a quarter inch on either side just to remove any of the rough edges left over from the form when I make my forms I always make them an inch wider so I have room to cut off uh, at the end cut it perfectly to the finished size we're gonna be hanging this thing with, with a what they call a French cleat and a French cleat is super easy to make. All you do is just get a piece of plywood or some wood and you're just going to rip a 35 degree angle on it. And that's it. That's, the, that's all you have to do. You'll see it right here when I cut through. I was looking for a push stick. Definitely want to be safe. So you can see here it makes a perfect angle and then you mount one side to the wall, one side to the back of your piece and it snaps right together. Quick and easy. You can see here how we mounted it with the tapered side down and away from the piece. And then the other side gets mounted similarly to the wall where you do the tapered side up and away from the wall and then it snaps right in quick and easy hang wall hanger. If you level the one side that's mounted to your piece, it'll be level when you attach it to the wall. 
All right, let's get to the Rubio Monocoat finish. What we're using here is Rubio Monocoat Plus 2C Pure. And it's a 3 to 1 mixture. You can see I did 3 teaspoons of oil. And we're going to do 1 teaspoon of accelerator. We're just going to mix it up, make sure it's fully mixed. And then we're going to dump it out on the surface. Now, if you guys haven't used this before, when it comes to black walnut or white oak, their website says you use two coats, even though it's technically called mono coat. For some reason, the molecular structure of these two woods require two coats. So we're just going to pour it out, kind of spread it out with a used gift card. That's what I got there. And once it's mostly spread out, we're going to take a white, non-abrasive Scotch-Brite pad, put it on our orbital sander, and really work the oil into the surface. As you can see, I have a little too much for this coat right here. So I'm going to get rid of all the excess, put it back in the cup. Now what I have found is if you let it set out, it will harden. But if you put a cloth over it and put it in the freezer, it keeps it from curing. And so you can use the rest in about a day. You can't go longer than a day, though. It's a pro tip. Way to save some Rubio Monocoat, because it is expensive, is to, if it's already mixed, put it in the freezer and you can use it the next day for your project, which is what we did here. We got this one coat on, and the next day we took it out of the freezer and added the second coat. Now, um, their website doesn't say anything about doing that. Um, I just find I have found it to work. So we're just going to move this oil back and forth across the surface with the non-abrasive Scotch-Brite pad. We're really just working it into the grain. We're going to take the same pad and get the edges Make sure you full. You get the edges fully. You, if you don't pay attention, you can miss a small spot. But I think just make sure that you use that same rag or Scotch Brite pad, and you can really work that oil into the edges. You only want to do a section that you can wipe off after applying it for 10 minutes. So you don't want to do an entire tabletop if you can't buff it off in 10 minutes. And that's what we're going to be doing here in just a second. We're going to take a white paper towel, but really blue shop towels work the best because they're lint free. But the object here is to wipe until all of the oil is off. It says that you, they say you can't buff off enough. So if you see here, you can see me, the towel has some stuff on it. I'll keep showing it to the camera. And the last wipe that we see, you'll see the paper towel still white. At that time, you're done buffing it off. Now with the accelerator, it's okay to add a second coat the very next day, um, but it's not fully cured until seven days. Now you don't have to use the accelerator, but then it'll take 21 days to cure. Okay, so here we're going to measure out for our sword mount hooks, and all I'm using is a chalk pencil. And I'm making small marks so that I can mount the hooks to the front of the piece. We use some drop from this black walnut to carve out some hooks. And the way that I did it was my, is my first time doing something like this. It was a little unsafe, so I don't show that part because I don't want anybody to, to get any bad habits from me. I already do enough, not, you know, i.e. not wearing mask or safety glasses, which I'm really trying hard to change on my channel here. I really want to stay safe and show you guys the safest way. So. Um, I made these hooks and now we're just going to get it 2 inches from the top, 2 inches from the bottom. The customer asked for them to be 15 inches apart, so that's exactly what we're going to do. So we got them marked out. Looking good. That's right. The next step is to mark with a center punch where I'm going to drill for the mounting screws. We're going to drill a screw through the back of the board and then glue the hooks down so you have glue and screw. It should last for a while. So 
So what I did here to find out exactly where the screw is going to pop out is I put the screw into the hole before I mounted the piece to see exactly where it's going to come out and then I made a mark. And then we're going to make that same mark on all four pieces. Now if you notice, those are the bottom ones and here comes the top ones. You can see I mismarked them. The other ones, the holes need to be from the top, not two inches from the bottom. So I actually found that before I mounted them, so we got it right on time. So you can see me adding some glue here. And we'll go ahead and mount one of them. And then just we're going to use the same process for all four of these. Alright, now once it's fully screwed in, um, I should have used some painter's tape to mask it off so I don't get glue on the other surfaces, but I was able to wipe it up a spot where I missed, and we're all good. Here comes the final product here in just a second. Let me know what you think. This thing is gorgeous. If you guys want to see more videos like this one, click the links right here. And I will see you on the next one, guys. As always, thanks for hanging out with us.